So yeah, so these are the few things that I'll be talking about. Um, yeah, shifting left is something that most of us would have heard. So we'll talk a little bit about that and about continuous testing. So what do we exactly mean by continuous testing and how continuous can it, can it be? And from where could you start this continuous testing? So these are a few things that I really want to talk about. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So a little bit about myself. So I'm with the quality engineering team at GitLab. And uh, yeah, I'm passionate about designing and developing test frameworks and tools. And simple and powerful is something that I totally believe. Also, I'm with the uh, Women Who Code Chennai chapter. So Chennai is a city in India. And I'm one of the directors there. And I'm really excited to see the other communities from other parts of us as well. All right, so um, yeah, so GitLab, I'm sure uh, most of you would have heard of GitLab, right? So it's the DevOps platform and uh, yeah, it, it is cloud agnostic. You could uh, use it in your own uh, cloud providers and uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it could be self-managed or you could also go with the SaaS solution as well. Security compliance are all built into the system and uh, yeah, open and always improving. So uh, the main um, uh, GitLab, it actually works on open core model, wherein like uh, uh, the community in edition is actually open source and the enterprise edition is actually open core, meaning like all the code is available to you uh, and uh, you can actually read as well. So, um, yeah, so these are various features that are there in GitLab. I wouldn't be going through all of these just wanted to give a snapshot of what are available, the various capabilities that are there at GitLab at every stage of the SDLC. Yes, so uh, to talk, talk about the, um, it wouldn't be complete if we uh, if I don't address the contributors as well. So we have around 3,660 uh, open source contributors as of today and around uh, 2,000 plus team members across 65 countries. And yeah, so uh, mentioned here a few open source partners. So uh, you can read more about what it actually means to be an open source partner. There are a few benefits when you are an open source partner. So you can read about it more here. So I thought it would be relevant to mention these details here given it's all about open source and yeah and there's also this program called uh, open source program uh, which is actually uh, it also has few benefits meaning like if it, if the project is a qualifying project then you get to uh, use the gitlab ultimate features and uh, yeah there are a few other benefits as well so again you can either google about this or you could even uh, contact the email mentioned here All right, so getting into the topic for today. So this is about depth test ops. Um, as I mentioned, when we talk about DevOps, we often uh, hear this word called continuous across every stage, right? So continuous development, continuous testing, continuous integration, deployment, continuous monitoring. So my focus here would be on continuous testing. So as you see, like there are multiple tools that could be used across different stages to attain these things and so when we talk about continuous testing like how continuous can it be so for example if you see in this um, uh, DevOps cycle right so you have a stage called test and uh, so what does it actually mean does testing come after a particular stage or does testing happen across different stages so that's something that I really want to emphasize on and before we get into it, I just wanted to talk a little bit about this shift left. So uh, have you heard of the term called shift left? Yeah. So basically, it's about shifting the testing left, right? So it's all about failing early on and failing fast so that you get the feedback faster and you improvise on it uh, earlier. So that's what this whole thing is about. So, um, so what does it mean? So from where can I start testing? Can I start testing right from the plan stage wherein uh, the requirements are being discussed? And uh, or can, can testing be done at a design phase itself wherein the, um, the UI and UX designs are all discussed? So where, where, 
where is the appropriate place to start this testing? <clears throat> so these are few questions that we'll answer uh, as we go through this, the various slides. And yeah, when we shift left, there are a few benefits attached to it as well, as I mentioned, failing fast, early detection of errors, and uh, yeah, it's cost effective. And yeah, those are a few benefits when we shift left. All right, so dev test ops is all about ensuring quality early on and at many points as possible. So as you see here, we test at different points in different ways. Maybe it's not exactly the same um, uh, way how we test at every stage. It might not even, you, you might not even, uh, it might not relate to test cases per se. Uh, actually, what I mean by testing, it's ensuring quality is what we are talking about, right? All right, so the step zero or the bare minimum that needs to be agreed upon by, by uh, the team members is that quality is everyone's responsibility. It's not, uh, it's, it no more lies in the uh, hands of the quality engineering team or the testing team or whatever it's called. So quality is everyone's responsibility is something that all of us should agree upon unless this is, uh, I mean, this is a change in the mindset, right? So I think uh, without this, uh, I don't think we could achieve what we are trying to with all of whatever tool is being used. Yeah, as mentioned here, quality is a continuous process. It's no more a phase in SDLC. So um, yeah, this talks a little bit about what we do at GitLab. Um, yeah, three enable process is something that uh, it, that most of us could be aware of. So this is about uh, involving the various stakeholders during the initial phases, during requirements analysis and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, the product team, the quality team, and the uh, development team they come together and discuss about it. And uh, don't be afraid of what you see here. About uh, this is actually. Um, uh, the Tanuki based on which the GitLab logo is based on. So yeah, so uh, as you see here, like there are four different stakeholders who, uh, who uh, are involved in these initial discussions and we call that process as the quad planning process. So uh, yeah, these are a few things that we do at GitLab and the tools, as I said, we use GitLab to build GitLab itself. So yeah, the GitLab issues, milestones, epics, and there are feature specific to planning. So all of those are being used and uh, yeah. And uh, can testing be done at the design phase? Uh, I think yes. So that's something that is um, uh, done here as well. So we have this feature called design management feature wherein the designers, the UI and UX designers, they could add their details to the GitLab issues and uh, the other stakeholders could actually collaborate on the issues itself. So this is a way of uh, getting the quality engineering team involved and in the discussion itself. All right, so when we move on to the code, uh, we build the uh, code and build the code and during code review, like there are certain features. So basically we need not, um, Think of, uh, I mean, we could ensure quality, uh, uh, not just by means of testing and test cases alone, but by various other features which could be part of your CI pipeline itself. So that's what I'm trying to emphasize. So these are a few things like uh, code coverage feature is, um, is again available in GitLab and I'm sure like we could uh, incorporate it in any other CI pipeline as well, wherein we have um, gens and NP NPM modules which take care of code coverage and they could be used the CI pipelines to ensure the quality. And um, yeah, so static code analysis is an other way of uh, ensuring the quality of the code itself. Again, um, the example that I mentioned throughout the slide is all that's used in GitLab, the various features that are available which en en enables uh, quality at different stages. But again, this need not, if you're using any other CI pipeline, it could actually be achieved by the various other modules that are available uh, as well. And it could be incorporated into your CI pipelines. So 
yeah, as you see here, so this is a snapshot of the MR widget. So MR is merge request. In GitHub, it's called pull request, right? So um, it's an equivalent um, um, feature here. And uh, this widget contains, uh, I mean, it could be configured based on what you need to see in the CI pipeline. And uh, um, the MR widget, it could actually show the quad quality and the degradation in the quality of code as well. And uh, yeah, accessibility testing is again part, uh, it could be again configured in the CI pipeline. And uh, th these could be actually added in the MR widget. So what I mean by uh, this is that even before your code could be merged into the next stage, maybe into the mainline branch, you are ensuring the quality of your code itself, right? So I think that is the biggest advantage. You get to uh, see all of these um, defects or failures early on. Yes, security testing is again possible. Uh, you could actually add that to your CI pipeline as well. And uh, yeah, again, this is an example from the MR widget again. So all of these are configurable in uh, your CI pipeline. If you're using GitLab, then the GitLab CI.yaml could be configured in such a way that all of these are enabled and uh, run every MR request, merge request. All right, so apart from all of these features that helps in ensuring quality, um, yeah, of, of course, we do have end-to-end -end tests and other tests which helps in uh, ensuring the quality as well. And testing pyramid is something that we, uh, we follow and we try to adhere to. Unit tests are non-negotiables. No feature is complete or it, could, it cannot be merged without a unit test. So that's uh, something that we uh, have as a non-negotiable thing. And end-to-end -end tests are more of journey tests, wherein uh, it doesn't test specific every detail of a feature. It's more about more of a blanket which tests the user's journey from end to end. All right. So um, yeah. So uh, apart from this, um, yeah, at the release stage, how could you ensure quality? Of course, we do have tests that are run uh, in different um, test environments as well, and these are reported uh, uh, through the Slack channels. Again, the, this this could this is a very useful thing wherein you can add it to the, your way of collaborating within teams, so that it helps in uh, quicker uh, access and taking. A, I mean, it helps in better uh, um, monitoring as well. And yes, sanity tests are run again on production environments, and uh, and also we do have uh, uh, tests run on on a subset of users alone. And um, of course, the feature itself would be it could be controlled, meaning like uh, we do have feature flags which helps us to deploy it for a percentage of users, and it could be increased. Um, so that's something that helps in better quality as well. And in terms of exp exploratory testing. Um, we do have some, uh, uh, there's a feature called review apps, which I didn't mention here, but it helps in uh, spinning up a dynamic instance even before your code is actually merged. Even uh, when the code is in the uh, merge, uh, merge request stage, and during code review, you could actually spin up an instance which has your code plus uh, the current uh, state of code itself. So that way you could uh, do some sort uh, some sort of exploratory testing, and you can take a look at how your feature is actually uh, looking even before the code is actually merged to the uh, main branches. So that way, it also helps in the quality of the code. All right, to summarize, all that I'm trying to say is quality is everyone's responsibility, and I think that is the mindset that we need to have and work towards it. And uh, then what is the uh, responsibility of quality engineering? Quality engineering is actually responsible to facilitate this testing and quality at every stage. And uh, yeah, and testability is something that all of us, uh, right from the designing and the development phase, everyone should be mindful of um, to, build, to build a product in such a way that it is easily testable. 
and uh, yes quality should be baked at every feature of the pipeline itself that's pretty much it any questions Yes. Yes, the issues are used throughout the life cycle wherein the issues are used uh, for the initial discussion as well. And again, if, uh, as I said, like it was fully remote and uh, or most of the discussions happen async and having it all in the issues, it facilitates this as well. And it doesn't end there. Of course, we do have the other features mentioned there as well, right? The milestones and epics. So milestones, basically, uh, we have a monthly release. So milestones help us to plan the upcoming releases as well and all the uh, and also there are features specific to release like wherein you could just tag a release and uh, pick the changes that you want to release so all of that happens based on these issues so all the features are actually tied the issues are used not just for discussions but it's used until the end uh, until the code is actually deployed you can when you look take a look at the issue you will see the complete state like we do use labels as well you can see the different stages through which it has gone. What state it is in? Is it in the planning phase or in development, or has it been uh, deployed and stuff like that? Yeah, I have my uh, colleague here as well, Albert. So, um, yeah, that's something that we constantly keep uh, trying to. So, in labels, there are there is a specific uh, type of label called uh, scoped labels, which actually has helped us a lot. Uh, meaning, like, uh, for example, if there's a bug, you want to call it a bug, but there are different stages in bug, right? Maybe it's a valid bug or it, it's a bug, but it would uh, not own fix bug and stuff like that. You could actually have scopes uh, on a uh, Kind of a label within a label kind of thing so those uh, scope labels has helped us and uh, yeah i think uh, that's one of the main thing that comes from mind yeah label hygiene is something that we constantly keep working on thank you thank you